Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start. And the way we do that here on First Five is by spending a little time together in the Word of God and in prayer. And so I'm so pleased that you would join us for this today, and I hope many days that you are tuning in and going on this journey together, because every day we read together one chapter of Scripture. And then uh, during our lesson time, we dig into that a little bit and then close with a word of prayer. And so today we're working with the Gospel of Mark and today we come to Mark chapter 13. Wow, I can't believe the progress we're making. So my invitation to you would be that at the end, we read the whole of Mark chapter 13 together. But for the purpose of our lesson, we're going to look at just a portion of it. We'll be looking at verses 5 through 11. So, if you want to grab your Bible or pull it up on your phone, I invite you to join me in Mark chapter 13, beginning in verse 5. Jesus said to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name, claiming, I am he, and will deceive many. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places and famines. These are the beginning of the birth pains. You must be on your guard. You will be handed over to the local councils and flogged in the synagogues on account of me you will stand before governors and kings as witnesses to them. And the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial, do not worry beforehand about what to say. Just say whatever is given you at the time. For it is not you speaking, but the Holy Spirit. Most of chapter 13 is what we would call apocalyptic. Okay, apocalyptic is when Jesus was teaching about the apocalypse or the end times, what will happen at the end of times. And so you'll see as you read it that there is uh, talk about deception and false prophets and even false messiahs that are raised up that many people believe in and chase after and are deceived by. He tells them, warns them that there will be persecution for Christians, even as he's describing how they will be persecuted. And there will be destruction and great distress. And so he talks about some of the signs of the end. But in the midst of that, Jesus offers an important teaching that I believe can be applied in our daily lives today. He was warning the disciples that the day would come when they would be arrested, when they would stand before even kings and governors. As I'm sure we can all imagine, that is a scary prospect. The idea of being arrested and coming before such a high court and, and standing there. In fact, in many ways, it's scary at a couple of different levels. First, of course, there is the concern for their own safety. Right? When, when they stand trial before a court, when Ava stands trial before any court, there is the fear that this may very well lead to punishment and imprisonment, Jesus' trial led to his very death. But what Jesus is describing, actually, is not just any court. It's not any magistrate or judge. Jesus is telling them that the day will come when they stand trial before some of the most powerful and influential people of their day rulers from the Roman Empire, kings and governors. So there is the added concern 
of speaking under such intimidating conditions. I'm sure you can imagine when you come to stand before a governor or a, a king even, enter into that court, there's, there's just all this uh, impressive pomp and circumstance and, and all that that just is so intimidating in the moment. But Jesus says to them, when that happens, don't worry. When it is time to speak, it won't be you speaking. It will be the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will give you the words that you need, help you to say what is meant to be said in this important moment. Now, that's important for the disciples for two reasons. First, the Spirit will be with them, interceding on their behalf in their trial, right? Hoping, helping them get through that as best they can, right? But more than that, the Spirit will also help them witness in that high court. Because the truth is, these opportunities, these moments, when they stand before governors and kings, right? When these, these aren't these aren't just about possible punishment, right? These are actually opportunities to share the gospel, right? You, we see that later in the book of Acts. We see that in Paul and others who, when they stood before high officials, they took that as an opportunity to proclaim the good news to people who themselves would be highly influential with others. People that if we were able to win over to Christ, people of high office, they have influence with many people around them. I believe this same underlying principle can be applied to our own lives. Not that we're necessarily going to stand before kings and governors, but there are going to be times when we have the opportunity to share Christ probably, almost certainly, with people who will later have the opportunity to share that with others. But we may be fearful, and we may think we won't know what to say or how to say it. But Jesus is saying to us, don't be afraid. When the moment comes, just begin to speak. The Holy Spirit will give us the words. So step out and trust God to carry you through those moments of opportunity. Do you join me in prayer? Lord, in this passage, we, we certainly see a, a little bit of a glimpse of the end times and what will come, but we also see this important insight about how when we have the opportunity to speak, even under really difficult circumstances or anxious moments or places of intimidation or places where we might feel uncomfortable, Lord, help us to be reminded that it's not just us speaking, that your Holy Spirit intercedes on our behalf and that when we're not sure what to say, we can trust you to give us the words that help us to stand strong and to proclaim what needs to be spoken. And so help us in those moments when we're unsure, Lord, to just put our trust in you and let you lead the conversation. I pray all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful weekend, and I will talk to you on Monday. God bless.